Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we continue chapter 6, Light and Optic on topic 6.2, Total Internal Reflection, part 1. So you can see from the picture here, a reflected image of the turtle can be seen on the boundary of water and air. Okay, why does this happen? So this phenomenon is known as total internal reflection of light. Total internal reflection only occurs when light travels from a medium of high density to medium of low density. As you can see here, light travel from the object that is the total to the air, from water to air. Okay, so the image that forms at the boundary is due to the phenomenon of total internal reflection. So what is total internal reflection? We will discuss later the definition. Now you can refer to your textbook, Activity 6.2. So the aim of this activity is to observe the phenomenon of total internal reflection and determine the critical angle of the glass. Apparatus needed, semi-circular glass block, ray box, power supply and protractor, material is a white paper. So what we do, we put the semicircular glass block on a white paper and then we can mark the center of the semicircle or semicircular glass block. Then we draw a normal line, POQ, perpendicular to the boundary. AB is known as the boundary, so between the glass block and the air. And then we can put a ray box at certain angle I, then we can see the angle R for the refracted ray. Now you can observe this video so that you can see clearly what exactly happened. So you can see here we have a semicircular glass block. We already marked uh, on the white paper the angles uh, of incident required. So you can see this is the normal line. Now we put the ray box here so that the light ray will be incident at the required angle of I. So this is angle I equals to 10. So you can see when travel from glass to air, it will be refracted away from normal. So this is angle 20. So you can see as angle I increases, <coughs> angle R also increases. Now you can see there's a, uh, the amount of light ray that already reflected here keep increasing. So you can see the light ray here. So when light ray travel along the boundary here when angle R equals to 90. So you can see large amount of light ray reflect into the glass block. Now you increase uh, greater uh, the angle I you can see finally there's no more light ray refracted here. All will be traveling in the glass. So we call it a reflected ray. So in this situation, there's no more refraction, only refl there's no more refraction eh, of light, then there's only reflection. So this situation we call it total internal reflection. I mean all the light will be reflected. Okay, so we can explain further that situation. Let's see when angle I is less than critical angle. What is this critical angle? Or an angle which is smaller. So when light travel from glass to air, it will be refracted away from normal. And then we can see a weak refracted ray in the glass, as you can see before in the ex ex experiment carried out. Now we increase the angle until equals to C, where you can see the light ray travel along the boundary. When travel along the boundary, angle R equals to 90. So when angle R equals to 90 degrees, the angle of incident here, we call it critical angle. So we mark as C. So it's quite easy for you all to determine from that activity. You just make sure the light ray travels along the boundary, then you measure the angle I. 
So that angle I, we call it critical angle of the glass block. Okay. Okay, let's uh, increase the angle I greater than C. As you know, before that, when we increase I, R also increase. When I equals to C, the light ray traveling along the boundary. If you increase the angle I greater than C, of course, it will be refracted further. When refracted further means the light ray now travel back into glass block. So in this situation, we call it total internal reflection, meaning totally reflected ray. Okay, so as you can see here, from here we can conclude eh, there are two conditions for total internal reflection to occur. First, light must travel from denser to less dense. Okay, this one, denser to less dense. And then the angle I must be greater than critical angle of the medium or glass block. So here we can summarize eh, this, uh, this activity carried out before. So condition to be satisfied for total internal reflection to take place are, so you can see uh, light travel from denser medium to rarer medium or less dense medium. So when angle I is greater than critical angle, it will be reflected. When it reflected, of course, it will all be law of reflection. So you can see angle I equals to R. So first, you must be able to list down eh, the two conditions for total internal reflection to occur. First, light travels from medium of high density to medium of low density. And then the angle I must be greater than the critical angle of the medium. So critical angle C actually defined as angle of incidence when angle of refraction is equals to 90 degrees. Okay. So activity 6.3. This one to discuss relationship between critical angle and refractive index. As we know that different density of medium will have different refractive index. The denser the medium, the higher the refractive index. Now we want to relate between critical angle and refractive index or the density of medium. Inference. Critical angle of the medium depends on the density of medium. Hypothesis. The higher the refractive index, the smaller the critical angle of the medium. Now you can look at this situation, this diagram. We have a glass block here. We use a laser pointer to produce a light ray. Let's say light ray travel from glass to air. So light ray travel at angle C, critical angle. So you can see the light ray travels along the boundary where R equals to 90. So now we want to determine what is critical angle of glass. We mark as uh, critical angle of glass, which is we mark as C. Let's say refractive index of glass is N1, refractive index of air is N2. In my previous video, we have discussed about Snell's law. Snell's law for light traveling from glass to air is given as or glass to water or glass to any other medium. We can put as N1 sine theta 1 equals to N2 sine theta 2. Now I refer to this diagram. So value of theta 1 is critical angle. N1 is the refractive index of glass. So you can see N1 sine theta 1. If you put N1 is for refractive index of glass, meaning theta 1 is angle in glass. Huh? Theta 1 is angle in glass. And then N2 is air. So N2 is refractive index of air and sine theta 2. So theta 2 is angle in air. Okay, so we just substitute all the values. So theta 1 equals to C, theta 2 equals to 90, and 2 equals to 1. So by substituting, uh, substituting uh, all the values, so you can get this one. N1 sine C equals to 1 sine 90. So you get N equals to sine 90 divided by sine C. Thus, we get N equals to 
sin c okay so generally this uh, formula can be used to determine critical angle of the medium based on the refractive index given so we can find, define n as refractive index of medium in this case is glass c is critical angle of glass in this case is the angle of medium in this case is glass okay uh, so we have this formula n equals to 1 over sine c that's the uh, new formula that we can relate uh, between the refractive index and critical angle Okay, look at this activity. This activity is to observe phenomenon of total internal reflection in water stream. Apparatus we need is 1.5 litre plastic bottle, plastic basin, laser pointer, wooden block, retort stand, material water and cellophane tape. You can see initially we put uh, or we cover the hole that already uh, made here. So there's a hole here so that the water can come out. Okay, this is a laser pointer. <clears throat> okay, what we do? Once the water is released out, you can on the laser pointer. So you can see a laser beam which enters the water stream experiences repeated total internal reflection until it come out from the end of the water stream. So if water stream replaced by an oil stream, light beam will experience total internal reflection even more times. This is because refractive index of oil is greater than refractive index of water. Critical angle of oil is smaller than critical angle of water. So just now we have discussed N equals to 1 over sine C. So meaning the higher the refractive index, the smaller the critical angle. Once critical angle is smaller, so total internal reflection will be easily occur. Okay, now you can refer to this, uh, to this uh, video so that you can see how this activity is carried out. This one is the bottle. There's a hole here. The lid of the bottle is closed so the water cannot come out. And there's a laser pointer pointing uh, directly uh, to the hole where the water will coming out. So you can observe what happens when the lid is open. So a stream of water with the color okay, coming out. Okay, so it's very beautiful, huh? uh, color, a stream of water that coming out due to the total internal reflection of water. So water coming out keep experience total internal reflection until reach here. Okay, so you can try this in the lab. Huh? So it's very beautiful. I think we can use a very uh, powerful huh? uh, laser pen and only we can see the color clearly and must be carried out in a dark room okay so this activity shows that uh, water water which uh, which has a certain critical angle will cause this situation so once the laser pointer uh, point the incident ray uh, to the water the water, the light ray eh, experience a total internal reflection thus coming out as a stream of water with a beautiful color. So I think for this uh, part, I will stop here. So you can uh, search more in the internet to view more videos uh, on this activity so that you will understand better. So for this topic, uh, let's summarize what is total internal reflection. So total internal reflection is a phenomenon that occurs when light travel from denser to less dense medium and the angle of incident is greater than the critical angle. Okay, let's uh, continue in the next video, part 2. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, so that you won't miss my next video. Bye.